on pity the poor judges. Well, quite obviously, each joke teller had a different style of speech, and although they provide an exaggerated example, the same holds true for all of us. If we can capture the rhythm and tone of our speech in our writing, then we end up with writing that's much more interesting for whoever's going to read it. In the same way, writing that emerges as a result of our own experience in life is also more effective. Here's an example of what we mean. Thank you for your application for the job, Mari. Now tell me, have you ever worked in a crèche before? Well, not really, but I've always wanted to, you know. I just adore young children. Well, the children we have at this crèche, of course, are very young, from six months to four years. Oh, that's marvellous. Kids are really cute at that age, aren't they? So, you've worked with little ones before then, Mary? Oh, friends of mine, you know, several of them have kitties under four. I love them. What, you've looked after them, have you? Well, I've done quite a lot of babysitting. It helps pick up a bit of extra money. Oh, yes, indeed. And this babysitting's taught you some of the problems of young children, has it? Oh, I never have any problems. The kids just go off to sleep. They're as good as gold. Now, I can honestly say I've never had any problems with young children. Do you think you'd have any problems here, working with them full time? Oh, I'm sure I wouldn't. I believe that if I like them, they'll like me, and that's all there is to it. Oh, I expect there'll be a few small difficulties at first, but I'm sure I'll cope. As I say, I just find kids so adorable, I can't see how I'll miss. All right then, Murray. Thanks for talking with us. We'll let you know our decision by mail. Thank you very much. It's Bye -bye. been my pleasure. Could you send in the other applicant, please? She was certainly uh, enthusiastic. Ah, uh, take a seat. Um, Harry, is it? Oh, yeah, that's right. Now, tell me, uh, Harry, have you ever worked in a crèche before? Uh, no, no, I haven't. Any experience at all working with young children? Well, um, I've got a three-year-old sister, and uh, then there's the twins. Uh, the twin brothers, that is. They're 18 months. You help out occasionally? All the time. Oh, until recently. Uh, Mum's remarried and doesn't have to work anymore, so uh, she can look after them now. And you still want to work with young children? Harry, you really must adore them. Oh, well, I wouldn't say I ad adore them exactly. No? Well, I don't exactly adore having to change crappy nappies all day or uh, wiping half a tonne of Heinz baby food off the floor every mealtime and the fridge and the wall and anywhere else that's within throwing distance. And, uh, you know, it's not a lot of fun having to wash them down every time they come in dirty from the backyard, especially with a mouthful of snails or listening to them cry because they're teething or overtired or throwing a tantrum and, uh, Sometimes when they scribble text to colour all over the stereo, it's a little bit hard to resist hanging them by the thumbnails from the rotary clothes on. But I'm sorry, I don't understand. If you don't like children, why did you apply for the job? Uh, uh, I didn't say I don't like them. You asked me if I adored them. Oh, quite right. Well, why are you interested in the job, then? Well, kids can be a bit of a problem, as I've, as I've explained. Uh, you know, especially as they can't concentrate on anything for long. No matter what you give them to do, they get bored really easily and want to do something else. That's why I like them. I don't follow you. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I'm a games freak, you see. I love inventing games. And little kids are really into all sorts of games. And, you know, as they find it difficult to concentrate and get bored very easily, it forces me to invent up new games all the time. You know, like, it's amazing what you can do with a few wooden blocks. You know, you can build houses with them. You can hide them. You can make animals out of them. You can, uh, you can teach kids to count by them. I even taught my little brothers to learn colours by them. Well, how do you think you'd cope with 34 of them all at one time? Well, all kids are different, aren't they? I mean, some are going to be more difficult than others. I suppose I'll uh, just have to try harder with some of them. All right then, Harry. Thanks for your time. Thanks for talking with us. We'll notify you soon. OK, my pleasure. Well, what do you think? Oh, no doubt about it. Harry was most impressive. Really? Well, anyone who knows young children as well as he does and still wants to work with them is perfect for this crash. Well, Harry's great virtue was that he sounded like he knew what he was talking about. He wasn't trying to pretend that looking after kids was a bed of roses. He was impressive because he could demonstrate quite specifically that he knew what the job would entail. When we write, one of our main tasks is to be convincing. To do that, we need to be conscious of what happens around us, to be keen observers of people, places and scenes. And using these things that we know to be true, our imaginations can select from them and work them into whatever it is that we write. The result will be something that sounds authentic because it's based on experience. It's for precisely this reason that care should be taken when using certain kinds of literary devices. 
Alliteration or the use of words that begin with the same letter is a case in point. Occasionally it can be effective, but it's also the sort of thing that can easily be done to death. Good evening. As the premier person in the Progress Party, it is my pleasure to put forward for your perusal tonight our party's platform. And I participate in this particular practice, praying for your patience and pleading for your perseverance. For these are perplexing and precarious times, times of penny-pinching, times of prejudice, and times of unproductive procrastination. These are times when prices are prohibitive, pensioners are paupers, primary producers are perishing, and the parish is plagued with picketers and protesters. We used to be a proud people, a profitable and progressive people. We pursued our points with purpose. We possessed a proper portion of life's pudding. To put the point plainly, our prospects were pleasurably plentiful. However, since the appearance of the present Premier and his party of pussyfooting pipsqueaks, the place has reached a parlous and pitiful plight. Their piecemeal policies have permeated this parliament, opening up a Pandora's box of pestilence and pandemonium. Let us put these pettifoggers in their place. Let us push them out on their posteriors where they properly belong. I pause to punctuate. With your vote, I promise power for the people, profit for the producers, and privileges for the pensioners. With your vote, Tom Pax will provide for parents pep up the performing arts and promote public servants, perhaps. Oh, precious people, when you proceed to the polls and you have your pen poised over the paper, please put P for Pax. Remember, a P for Pax shows that you give a P for your country. Well, the thing about his use of alliteration was that it gave his speech an air of falseness because he was obviously striving for an effect. In the same way, the use of rhyme can be equally unconvincing. Good evening, ladies. You too, men. It's good to be here once again. The thrust of election is in the air, and I know you know that I really care. I care for kids. They can't grow up fools. That's why I promise a lot more schools. I care for adults and parents too. I care for law and the boys in blue. I care for defence, and with my own two lips, I promise guns and planes and ships. I also care about inflation. I know it's the curse of this great nation. We've got plans, we'll grab it by the collar and force real value back into the dollar. We'll beat inflation with sound administration and good old Aussie determination. <laughs> Believe me, we've got oil galore. Copper, zinc and silver, iron ore. This country's rich, it's really wealthy. You can't tell me that that's not healthy. I've heard Tom Pax tell you today that you should vote the other way. Why change now when it's all so great? I wouldn't risk it, not me, mate. Stick with me, Max Nerd's the name. I know how to play the game. I've been in power for 20 long years. I've led you people through joy and tears. Don't vote for Pax, he's a real nutter. He couldn't tell Marge from butter. Listen to me, and I'll give you the word. Vote for me, and get a real nerd. And I don't know whether either of them would get many votes. But obviously, such devices should be used sparingly and for a purpose. It's best to let real ideas and your own words do the work. The final point we'd like to make is to do with the structure of your writing. 
If you're writing some kind of story, you don't necessarily have to start at the beginning. Just as films use flashbacks and flash-forwards, so you can experiment with time in your writing. Sometimes it can pay to start a story at the very end. As well, don't feel the need to cram in every possible detail. Tell only those bits that are really important to the story. Hey, g'day, Jim. Wait till I tell you about last night. Well, I just got home from school about four, see? And uh, my sister Judith was uh, in her room, and the whole house was pretty quiet, you know? Oh, yeah, what happened? Well, my sister Judith came out of her room, and then we played Monopoly with Charlie from across the street. And Charlie got uh, Mayfair and Park Lane. Oh, yeah, it sounds great, uh, Carl, but look, I've got to get my things together or else I'll be late for the next period. Yeah, sure, Jim. Right. Hey, Julie, did I tell you about last night? Now, Carl, what happened? Well, when I got home from school, I had a peanut butter and banana and Vegemite sandwich. Yeah, jeez, yeah. that's gross. Listen, I've got to hand this essay in before the next class. That's awful, Carl. Did you eat that sandwich, did yeah, you? Yeah, but that's not what happened. Something much more serious happened than that. Oh, but... nothing much worse than that could happen to anyone. Peanut butter, banana and Vegemite. Yeah. Hey, Andy. Yeah? Did I tell you about last night? No, no, you didn't. Hey, but make it quick, though, will you? Yeah. I got this science test to Savo. Yeah, right, uh -huh. sure, sure, Andy. Well, I got home from school about four, see? Oh, yeah? And uh, I had a sandwich and a glass of milk, and Charlie came over and we played Monopoly with my sister, oh, and yeah. Charlie got all these hotels. Yeah. And then my sister went to her room. Yeah. Dad came home, Mum was cooking the dinner, and Nan was brushing the dog in the lounge room. Oh, come on, and... get on with it, will, will you, Carl? Yeah, I was just getting the interesting bit. Oh, you but... sure you were? Look, I got this test to Savo. I'll, I'll catch up with your uh, story later, eh? Okay. All right. I thought somebody'd like to know how my sister won a million dollars last night. What? What happened? What did she do? Tell us about it. Well, <clears throat> I just got home from school about four. See, had a sandwich and stuff, and then we played Monopoly with Charlie from across the street. And Charlie got all these hotels. Yeah, you know, he played like he owned the world, and pretty soon he did. My sister seemed to land on everything he owned. Fifty pounds he'd yell, and then you owe me a hundred pounds he'd tell her. And then he bought Mayfair and Park Lane and put hotels on everything. And it all got too much for my sister. And she, and she got really mad and had this big argument with Charlie and really chucked a mental. So Charlie decides to leave. And just as he's going out the door, his telegram arrives to my sister. Yeah. And it, it's from his place in England she'd been to earlier this year. And it, it says she's won the soccer pools and it's worth over a million dollars. Oh. That's great. So you're all rich. What will you do, Carl? Well, we're having a party this Saturday night, and everyone's invited. Oh, oh fantastic, mate. Oh, that's really good. Good on you, Carl. Shake hands, mate. Oh, oh, exciting. <laughs> and the story got there after all. Well, during this program, we've stressed such things as simplicity, the use of concrete language, reliance on your own experience, capturing the rhythm and tone of your voice, and being sparing in the use of such devices as rhyme and alliteration. In doing this, we're not trying to make a set of rules for everyone to follow. Obviously, there are as many different approaches to writing as there are writers. Still, we hope there's been something in all of this which might give you a few ideas.